Exclusive. Jeremy Clarkson came under heavy public scrutiny for controversial remarks he made directed towards Meghan Markle. However, comedian Catherine Ryan has since told Express.co.uk that she found the joke funny, despite not being a fan of the Top Gear star. This article contains affiliate links. We will receive a commission on any sales we generate from it. Learn more. Jeremy Clarkson, 62, admitted hating Meghan Markle, 41, on a cellular level as well as making other jibes directed at the Duchess of Sussex in his now-deleted The Sun column. Jeremy was publicly condemned over his scathing barbs by a range of celebrities including Carol Vorderman, John Bishop, and the former Top Gear star's own daughter Emily Clarkson. However, in an exclusive interview with Express.co.uk Catherine Ryan, 38, back the Clarkson's farm star, despite not being a fan. Express.co.uk asked Catherine what she thought about Jeremy's controversial words in the aforementioned publication. She replied, I think that as someone who is not a fan of Jeremy Clarkson, I am categorically not a fan of him. I see what he's doing. I could tell that he was trying to be extreme, but make a joke. Yeah, it was funny. He was drawing from cultural examples. Even as someone who's not a fan of Jeremy Clarkson, Objectively, I think he was trying to tell a joke, and I will always defend someone's right to tell a joke. Would I have told a joke like that about Meghan Markle and made that comparison? Absolutely not. Catherine then admitted that it's weird to see certain older men so utterly obsessed with the royal. Rounding up her views on Jeremy, Catherine admitted, When I read it, I just thought it was pretty pathetic. I like Meghan Markle, but I don't think that that article was as mean-spirited as some people take it. This is the trouble when you take sections in black and white, especially when it's written down. In the right context, it might have come across a little bit softer, but this is why people who aren't comedians shouldn't try to be a comedian. Jeremy has since apologized for his disgraceful language, with the Sun also releasing an apology and removing the column. His lengthy statement read, Usually, I read what I've written to someone else before filing, but I was home alone on that fateful day, and in a hurry. So when I finish, I just press send. And then, when the column appeared the next day, the landmine exploded. It was a slow rumble to start with and I ignored it, but then the rumble got louder. So I picked up a copy of The Sun to see what all the fuss was about. We've all been there, I guess, in that precise moment when we suddenly realize we've completely messed up. You were sweaty and cold at the same time, and your head pounds, and you feel sick. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Had I really said that, it was horrible. The son quickly apologized, and I tried to explain myself. But still, there were calls for me to be sacked and charged with a hate crime. More than 60 MPs demanded action to be taken. ITV, who make Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and Amazon, who make the farm show and the grand tour, were incandescent. I therefore wrote to everyone who works with me saying how sorry I was and then on Christmas morning, I emailed Harry and Meghan in California to apologize to them too. I said I was baffled by what they had been saying on TV but that the language I'd use in my column was disgraceful and that I was profoundly sorry. Over the last 30 years I have written very nearly 5,000 newspaper and magazine columns so it was inevitable that one day I'd do a Harry Kane and Sky one of the damn things which is what happened with the piece about Meghan. So can I move on now? Not sure. It's hard to be interesting and vigilant at the same time. You never hear peals of laughter coming from a health and safety seminar. But I promise you this, I will try. Who knows? Very soon now I shall be a grandfather, so in future, maybe I'll just write about that. Meghan's husband, Prince Harry, later accused Jeremy of writing articles in a bid to spread hate rhetoric, dangerous conspiracy theories, and misogyny. IPSO is currently investigating the matter with claims the presenter breached Clause 1, Accuracy, Clause 3, Harassment, and Clause 12, Discrimination, of the Code. Meanwhile, Catherine is supporting Busso's Flavor That Pops campaign, featuring a new show-stopping menu of popcorn flavors, inspired by its best-selling recipes. Speaking on the campaign, she said, I love you so, we have a really organic relationship because my husband and I have been getting the recipe boxes since like 2018 or 2019, and it's just delicious adventurous food that you cook at home and not every recipe box is like that. This has us hooked, we don't even order takeaway anymore, it's been so good for family mealtimes.